Bodo number two, the 125s. You see Robbie Rayner number 24. Doesn't get the good break. It's number seven, Kevin Windham once again. Here from that position, that's for sure. Carmichael, this time is right there. Carmichael in a much better position. That's Scott Carter, another local rider from Ashford, Connecticut. Out in front though, Ricky Carmichael takes the lead away from the hole shooter, Kevin Windham. Jeez, I, you know, he talked about being a little bit too aggressive in the first moto early. Did you see that pass? It opened, just cut the line away, came up that hill, looked like he's on a 250. Brock Glover won the title at 17, but the youngest, 16 years of age, David. I remember that too, Marty with IL is Carmichael takes a checkered flag. He had that surfer rip build. The 30-second board is up. They'll start revving it up, and we're off. Ricky Carmichael on the inside. Nick Wayne, number 23. It is Ernesto Fonseca. Here. Well, he must have got an extraordinary jump because from the looks of Carmichael, he came off perfect. Charlotte Hall, Maryland, number 92, is also in the mix there on the Suzuki. Right in front of Ricky Carmichael. So Fonseca... And now Carmichael moves into second place. Look how dangerous that guy is. Carmichael, that is, just pulling a tear away on the uphill with the confidence to say, well, I'm going to get the whole shot. He's so quick to get to the lead. Carmichael now doesn't even stop to go bar to bar, just keeps right on going. Just not too quick to get moving and want to make sure they don't make a mistake and getting him out of there. Here's our leader, Ricky Carmichael. Boy, has he just taken off with this second moto. Michael, had he gotten better starts? Our Suzuki rundown, Carmichael, Volan, Seller at the top three, and Ricky just sailing along. Look, the two buddies, as you heard earlier. Walker working out with Carmichael, and Ricky Carmichael takes the checkered flag. As I'll tell you what, I did some hard work before this race, hoping it would be a lot hotter. But uh, I didn't get my uh, wish. But, uh, you know, I had fun. We're almost set to go for the final moto of the afternoon from Southwick, Massachusetts. Shane King on the KTM once again gets the whole shot. Ninth position. Looked like he didn't bend anything on the bike, though. He was able to take off pretty aggressive, so. There's Shane King, number 110, on the four-stroke KTM. Two whole shots in a row for Shane. Getting good traction off that cement. And here's Ricky Carmichael. Carmichael wants the lead. And he takes it on the jump. There's anyone faster on the racetrack. He takes big chances to do it. Jumps right into that inside line right away. That's something they kind of scouted on that warm-up lap. Whoa, a little squirrely there. He lands short on that double. Well, that's scary. When you go around that corner like that, if all you got to do is just hit one little bump wrong, have that back end swap around and swapping side to side down that hill is not easy. And our leader, Ricky Carmichael. We've got to make up for the bad performance at Mount Morris. I need to win, and win he does, taking the checkered flag here in the second photo. 30-second board sideways. We're off and running. First photo, 250s. Smets just leaped off that gate, and it's Joel, Joel Smets, who gets the whole shot. Doug's just an amazing guy. They, they say, you know, once you learn how to ride a bicycle, you don't forget. Well, it's the same thing for Southwick, or start for Doug Henry. You can get him, but look at who he's got on his tail. Ricky Carmichael. Front. Henry has moved into second place, Carmichael into third. Look at the way these guys are swapping down that straightaway. Carmichael battling for second place right now. It's part of bar. They take two very different routes into that berm. Four strokes. He decided to just pull up here in his own pickup truck, park next to semi, <laughs> and bring his practice bike, I guess. A YZ250 out of that pickup truck. And number 19 is hanging right in there. Boy, the fans have got to be loving this. Henry, of course, from Connecticut. On the insides, we have a battle for the lead right now. Carmichael wanting to take over things. Tries the inside on Schmetz. That's a shorter line, but it's so much rougher. Ricky just doesn't care. If it's faster, he's taking. He doesn't care how many bumps there are. He just saved a few there in the mechanics area. Good thing those guys backed up. He just went right up in there where they were standing and missed all the holes. Carmichael with an 8th in the first moto in the opening round, a 5th in the next one, a 13th in the first round of Mount Morris. is looking for his best first moto finish of the season. He's hounding Schmetz right now. To really bother Schmetz. Watching Ricky go to work here on Schmetz, he is so impatient. He doesn't 
want to follow this guy for one more turn. He's willing to take a stupid line if that's what it takes. So he doesn't have to follow the guy. Try to make something happen. And in the process, these two are starting to pull away from third place. Here comes Ricky. A little touch. Hey, I'm here. Get out of my way. <laughs> and Ricky Carmichael moves into first. Now he can see firsthand. Henry must be back there going, gee. And he's still hanging pretty close in third, but he's getting an eyeful. Look at this. Ricky gives him an elbow, gets him to the berm. He looks like he's minding his own business, but Smith acted like he was going to come back in there. Ricky says, I don't think so. Oh, Henry in the ring. I'm not sure those champions in Europe are used to getting bounced around as Henry has moved into second place on Schmidt. I thought he didn't need to work any harder. He just needed to work at not falling down the first lap of the first moto. I mean, it seemed like his speed was there, but he wasn't satisfied with it. He is death racing. This is a tough race. The checkered flag for Ricky Carmichael. Do you have any extra incentive when you saw the 500cc world champion Joel Smets leading? Uh, not really. You know, uh, his bike is, you know, it's so fast, it's like not fair. And I mean, he just goes around the turn and then gasses it down the straightaway and I have to work my butt off to catch back up. And, you know, once I got by him, I don't, I don't know what happened to him. But, uh, you know, I ain't worried about him. I'm worried about myself and I'm trying to put this Chevy Trucks Kawasaki up front. Sideways. Let's see who gets the break in the gate. With them, a pretty good run, but John Dowd. Dowdy gets the whole shot on the KTM. Ray, look at the battle behind him. Ricky Carmichael moves quickly into second place, Wyndham in third. Now, Ricky jumped so far off the top of that hill, he looked like a little bit of Supercross style back there. He landed at the downside of one of those whoops, made everything look smooth. Place footage in the opener. Kevin getting good starts lately. He got a whole shot at Mount Morris. It makes you nervous. You just you don't get any time to breathe, and here he comes. Here comes Carmichael looking over at John Dow. They don't even stay bar to bar very long. Maybe a fraction of a second. He's clearing that double right there, lands on the downside wide open. Look at the lead already. I mean, if that doesn't ruin your confidence to the point where you're going, okay, you know, let me just make sure I beat everybody else. He may have been favoring his left side a little. Look at Ricky. Just but Nobody goes through that corner wide open. Now, let me just tell you right now, if you have aspirations of being a motocross champion or a supercross champion, you better like to go fast and like that rush, that, that scary feeling you get when you're a kid and you go on a roller coaster that your dad made you go on. That's how Ricky feels, and he liked, that's his drug. Way through though. These guys do the same thing on land, and it's just amazing to watch. Well, this track is very much like water. It changes every lap, and the checkers are out for Ricky Carmichael. Yeah, but right now, the car is sideways, and the first 250 moto is ready to go, and they're off. And right up the middle, you see Jamie Brockman coming on the outside. He is a privateer from Australia, but just like that, there comes Ezra Lusk, and right behind them is Doug Henry, but Ezra Lusk, Yes, this is the first time that he has had his Kawasaki out front. Goodbye. Doug Henry goes right by Ezra Lusk. That was a local line, David. He knows this track very well. He and John Dowd both will rounds from now during the week off and won all three classes, trying to get himself fit, but racing at this pace is a whole different deal. You go to Red Bud on an amateur day, you're racing against the Throttle Jockey Brothers. You come here and you got the likes of there's LaRocco now up to third, and in fourth place comes Ricky Carmichael. He is on a mission. Ricky Carmichael's always done well here, David. He won the last three times. Whoa! <laughs> He's come here on a Honda. Well, that's been the same for some of the other races, too. In, in fact, races where he's never won on a 250 and never won on a Honda, and both. And he's been perfect so far this season, and he's not wanting these leaders to get Michael back there. He's going to understand this is Carmichael's series. And a three-way battle for the lead right there. Lust tried to pass Henry, and he almost gave the spot up to Carmichael, who was coming like a freight train. That's what it feels. You can hear him back there. He runs that thing so wide open. And then on the inside, down inside of Lusk, and he takes over second. Let's go down to Cameron in the mechanics area. Oh, I tell you, he never ceases to amaze me, this guy. Seems like the fans are really on his back. Yeah. Everybody cheering. It's so awesome. This, this is definitely home for him. Welcome back. Thank you. Thanks. Woo! They have just got to be loving this. I know the Southwick faithful are, but 
like you said, David, it's a warm, fuzzy feeling until Ricky Carmichael comes up behind you. Psycho, you just you cannot believe what's happening. And right there goes Carmichael, a little inside out, but Henry's going to challenge him on the inside, and he holds him off, and now LaRocco might go past Carmichael. Doug Henry is not easy to pass. He's not going to be willing to give it up just this quick, and LaRocco is really making things tough on Carmichael right now. He cannot afford to go out wide and take a look at Henry without LaRocco sneaking in there. Ray, so it's really 50-50, but Carmichael is probably the one that's more surprised than we are, just going, man, I thought I could get around these guys, but it's not easy. Down the hill, this is a battle of courage right there. Well, you know what, Carmichael's going to win that battle every time. Maybe a young Doug Henry, but not a vacation in Doug Henry. Now, and Ricky looks back at him like, hey, nice job. So Carmichael back out front. Well, looked a lot the same like that earlier today when Doug Henry was leading number 19 on that Yamaha wearing that Fox gear. Victories at Washougal last year over Ricky. It seemed like all that did was make Ricky even more mad, more prepared to keep on winning. And there's the checkered flag for Ricky Carmichael. Now, the card is sideways as we get ready to go with the second moto at Southwick, and they are off. Once again, right up the middle of the field, it is... Keith Johnson this time. I thought it was Henry, but it's Keith Johnson. There you see Carmichael Dean start. And right there again goes Doug Henry, and he's going to lead the moto again here at Southwick. Across David, there's no shortcuts. Unless he cuts the track, he's going to have to find his way to the gym between now and check the flag, and it's not going to happen. Working on the right things and working hard for so long that it seems like he's Superman, but you know, he took him a long time to get where he is. And you hear the crowd hollering and yelling. Their local hero, Doug Henry. He's put another lap in the record books and out front. Carmichael is second. Then it's Keith Johnson and Kyle Lewis with a little bit better start the track. Little double jump, but it's a big double jump for Carmichael. And just like that, he's going to go around Doug Henry. Goodbye. That's the end of that. And I've always, I wondered if he could clear this whole thing. I thought about that when the track was smooth. They probably could jump all the way up onto that flat section. But once the track gets rough, there's no way. Doug has got a great opportunity right here. Maybe to check out what car might have to get through there, not high speed. And you wouldn't be able to get yourself in trouble because you couldn't get your speeds up that much. Yeah. Check out this back section. Perfect. That one's crashing right there. You know, Gosh, championships came to Southwick, didn't get the whole shot either time, but here he is with his second checkered flag, a solid 1 1. Ricky Carmichael remains. sideways here at Southwick Mass, and we are away clean into the front of the pack, right off the bat, David. Somewhat of a surprise, and Nathan Ramsey has perfect positioning. Great start, Carmichael's there. So he's trying to clear his vision. Everyone takes the opportunity to clear their vision, and David, the rain that came down yesterday is certainly apparent. Ricky pointed it out, it's going to be rough today. It's, it's not quite rough enough in this moto to where these guys are really going to get that Michael in third, Jimmy Ferry in fourth. Here it is. Ricky took advantage of, of Doug reaching up to clear his vision. It looks like he's finally ahead of him. So now his teammate right up there ahead of him. That's the only thing keeping him from the lead. Todd Harris along with David Bailey and Ricky Carmichael making a run on his teammate Nathan Ramsey. Closed the door, moves into first. And he pushed him so wide, he let Ferry get in there as well. He, I understand Ricky trying to get the lead. Because you, you can't see when you're in second. So right. As soon as he got into the lead, he pulled the pair off. So did Tim Ferry. Ramsey was able to get him back. American Suzuki presents Motocross 338. Todd Harris along with David Bailey and Cameron Steele, your leader, continues to be number four, Ricky Carmichael. He didn't look all that happy, but I'll bet he's happy now. Ricky Carmichael picks up the win. Dirty board is sideways, and we are off here at Southwick. This is moto number two. Kevin Windham on the outside. This time, David, a much better start. Last time, he was back in the pack around eight. Windham right to the front. Right there. Carmichael oh, right now. Oh. and fifth, and two Yamaha riders go down. You know, he was going for it right there. Just looked like he may have caught a tire to the edge of the right. race. It's Kevin Windham, your leader, followed by Ricky Carmichael. We've seen this duo get together before, David. This is some phenomenal racing. Uh -huh. Kevin just railing that right-hand berm after the finish on the big 450. Railing that. That ends his day early, but... Wow, Ricky Carmichael goes for the move. A little mistake by Wyndham through all those ruts. He couldn't double out of that. Of any mistake, it actually causes riders in front of him to make mistakes. And here we go again. This time Kevin's got a cross rutted downshift. He's got to just let Ricky Carmichael jump over his head. Fast in the series next week at Budge Creek. But uh, here at Southwick, man, it's pretty tough to stop Carmichael. He expects to win this race more than any other. But too late.
So Ricky Carmichael comes to Southwick one more time and claims yet another victory. Carmichael. Could Ricky Carmichael keep this unbelievable streak alive coming back from injury? In moto number one, he said yes as he picked up the whole shot. Sharp, but Ricky Carmichael is nowhere to be found. You know, right now, if you're Sean Hamlin, you want to get lapped, don't you? I don't want to do another lap. At the end of moto number one, it was five motos in the books and five wins for Carmichael. Another moto, another RC hole shot. Hey, my trainer, Eldon Baker, had me in tip-top shape today, and the starts are awesome. But with Ricky being so dominant, the pit board would say it all. Oh, no, not the high five on the last lap. Room to spare, Carmichael would close to the finish line with his sixth straight moto win. Carmichael is pinched off at the start, and it was Kevin Windham with the whole shot. The same specialist was third. He goes the inside, makes that pass for third spot. Where Reed is a sand rider, I would have to say Kevin Windham is the anti-sand rider. I mean, he's fast in those hard packed smooth tracks. Well, RC fired off a message to Reed. Move over, buddy. This is my track. The way RC was riding, you would never know. The temperature was close to 100 degrees. Time to displace Windham. While okay, K-Dub lined up to the perfect sand berm rail, RC squared it up. And then Bonsai to the inside for the pass. Who says you need perfect form? Carmichael made a rare blunder. Oh, I'm bringing Carmichael, who goes down all by himself. Carmichael down, picks it up, still in the lead, and now goes by, or Reed goes by. Carmichael, meanwhile, had a ton of work to do. After getting the bike fired, he passed John Dowd for the second time in the moto. Then it was Kevin Windham, also for the second time. Bubba was out, so that put him in second place. Moto, since Kevin Windham in August of 2003. Good job, dude. You deserve it more than anybody. Carmichael lined up next to each other off the start. Watch the inside line. The Southwood legend John Dowd pulls the whole shot, leading the first lap. But this error gave the lead to Reed. Dowd squirted back in ahead. Michael lost his moto win streak to Reed. He still had his overall streak to worry about. At the end of the second lap, he moved into third. At 39 years of age, Dowd would be challenging Carmichael for a podium position. RC made the move, but not before fighting for him. For two laps, Reed was in overall contention. Handed it over to Carmichael when he blew out a burn. RC said thanks and decided all right. That's feeling pressure. That's what Ricky does to you. And then he flies off that jump, carries the front wheel a little bit high. And... The 78 victory for Ricky Carmichael out of 100 tries. Survive this moto. The ones that aren't, they pull it in. Side by side, James Stewart, Ricky Carmichael off the starting gate. Stewart gets the better start. Whole shot award. In any case, he comes out with the lead with Carmichael sitting in the number two position. And I believe that's Millsap's third. It's all over him, trying to make something happen right now. Almost made a pass right there, but James Stewart holds on. Kawasaki's James Stewart out in front, as he was in moto number one. And again, riders choosing very different lines, trying to stay out of the roost of the guy in front. Carmichael out front. So it looks like the same battles are shaping up. Those two are going to kind of do their thing. Reed will probably catch up to Millsap's, and those two will have their little fight. Right now it's one, two, three as Millsaps goes for a tear off there. The more tired you get, the more you have a tendency to sit down, and then the more beat up you get because that seat's just pounding you. So this to this. How about you, Ping? Oh man, this is what it's all about. This is uh, this is why people love motocross to see battles like this. So Carmichael and Stewart, again, very different lines, and we've told you why that happened. Continuing happens. to find an opening, looking for an opening to try to get around Stewart. We heard him say he should have done it earlier in the first moto. And it's already quite a ways into moto number two. He still hasn't been able to get it done. Now he pulls up alongside into the lead. Stewart, though, with the inside line. Battles back to the front. Right hand turn. Stewart's got the edge. Carmichael's going to have to settle for second. That's that long. So now Stewart with a little bit of a wide oh. line. Carmichael swapping ends. Jeez. Almost had a disaster happen there. But he gathers it back up, loses the lead to Stewart again. That's three lead changes in the last 30 seconds. I have to ask, was that genuine fan enthusiasm or were they pretending? They were real. That was real. These guys are excited on the long side of the track. You know, another effect of Southwick, not only are you tired of the Still having to feel some of the effects of the crash that he suffered at the last round. Ricky Carmichael has made a few mistakes and tipped over now and then, but is riding pretty much injury free. Ricky's been setting him up in this turn. He goes inside as they come up out of this hill. 
And he does it again. Yep. Not close enough behind the back wheel. Trying to stay out of that roost. Crosses through it as quickly as he can. To the inside goes Carmichael. Stewart blocks him off. These two charge so hard into obstacles. You watch them come over these jumps, off these drop-offs where other guys are kind of coasting. They are wide open. You can see Ricky just hanging off the bike. And some of the more experienced veterans standing at trackside. And then there's everybody else. And they're nowhere in the picture, hardly. Although Millsaps is still hanging close. Reed still trying to make up some ground onto the podium. You can see the Millsaps front wheel just pop into the picture there for a second. He's actually keeping these two in sight, which, which is impressive for him. I mean, no one's really had their speed all year. Davy Millsaps being right there. I would say not just a little bit. I mean, he's not used to uh, anyone being back there. Of course, the manufacturers have to love it as Carmichael takes the lead again. Oh. Suzuki, Kawasaki, and Honda, they're all right there. Everybody's got a little something to be happy about here today at Southwick. That was old school RC, too. Feet off the pegs, a little sideways, just wide open. And Stewart, likewise, coming back with a very, very determined effort here. Pulls up alongside on the inside of the right-hand turn. Carmichael with a bike length or two. Here he comes, Stewart. The crowd goes crazy. A little too much off the berm. Stewart knows you got to make a pass back on him immediately. You know. Moto number two and Ricky Carmichael is all alone. Why? Because he put a pass finally on James Stewart as though he is gathering himself for any sort of, uh, of late attack. Oh. In fact, whoa, we saw smoke first, which tells me something was wrong with the bike, and that was not a James Stewart error. That was a mechanical problem over there to help him out. Watch, let's see if we oh. see any. Oh, yeah. Rear wheel stopped. Engine stopped. I was an expected keep raising. And Ricky Carmichael has to have guessed what, what has happened. Uh, James Stewart has left the building, so to speak. It seemed as though you were riding on the ragged edge. You and James are pushing it to the limits. Was it the enthusiastic crowd that gets you guys pumped right up? Ah, uh, definitely. You know, the crowd is, is loving it. How, how could they not? As good as the racing has been. And, uh, man, it, it's just been a blast. And, uh, you know, definitely, uh, you know, I'm going to hate leaving this place. I don't know, maybe I have to come back and race here. I, I love this track. It's tough, and uh, it's definitely a, a tough man's track, and, and got to get up to my trainer, Eldon Baker, for uh, keeping me in shape. Congratulations on another victory. Boy, you can see the sandy nightmare that Southwick is. What a great shot from Jason Thomas. His first one into the clean air. Tim Ferry right behind him, Stewart's teammate, and Carmichael sits in third. Him. Great start for Gavin Grasick. Haven't seen him up in the top five of the motocross class here ever, so we'll see how uh, the for him. Carmichael working the inside of Ferry, and the Kawasaki rider loses the position. Trying to adjust the clutch, there might be a problem with that. Well, the problem for James Stewart is now the fact that Ricky Carmichael is closing in and they have so much respect for each other that they're just going to throw everything they have in their arsenal at each other. And you're about to see another great one here today. And the crowd responds. They love watching these two guys ride. Very similar machine. So we've got to wonder if, uh, you know, later on in this moto, there could be a problem there with Stewart's bike. Well, you got to figure Carmichael's thinking the same thing. You got to wonder how hard he's going to push Stewart here at the very beginning. Plenty of development, research and development to keep that problem from happening again. Mechanic for Ricky Carmichael. They just got around Josh Summy on the 36. Stewart really seems to be guarding the inside lines, and I, I, I mean tight. Wide lines, but Stewart really hugging it tight as they get through some of these lapped riders. See right there, you see James Stewart actually hit the rear brake to really stay tight and almost square that turn up. And that's not that's not the way to ride Southwood. Yeah, but look at this. Carmichael is right there. Carmichael takes the lead away from Stewart, but James tries to counterattack. Right now, it looks like Stewart, as Carmichael gets past him, that he's just not comfortable. See him just oh, bouncing man. all around. Just not having that Southwick flow that I was talking about. James will try to make up for the deficiencies of the bike with his own skill level. And a lot of times when you have that much skill, you can do that. They're done. There he did. There he did. 
Checkered flag for Ricky Carmichael. With the roost coming off those rear tires, there's something else here at Southwick. Carmichael gets the easy lead early on with Stewart right behind him. Riding here on the 118. Boy, Stewart almost went off the edge of the track there. Way there on the outside. Track's brutal at this point. You even see some shadows casting ac across the track here late in the, or early in the second moto, late in the day. Whoa, God, look at the front end wiggle on Stewart's bike. I'll tell you what, Carmichael's bike just looks rock solid, as solid as you can be here at Southwick. And Stewart looks like his has given him all sorts of handling problems. Look at the difference in how they go through that corner. Toughest track of the circuit, the most physically demanding on the rider. And if anybody's ever trained with the heart rate monitor, you'll know what I'm talking about here. Such a pleasure and he, uh, to, to call these races with him this year so far in, a, you know, in his career and just what, what an honor it is and to get to watch him. This car team that Ricky is working with now, and they said they've never seen an athlete in that sport with the work ethic of Ricky Carmichael, and it came through again here today. Well, ever since he entered the premier class here at Southwick, he has never tasted defeat, and today, no other. Ricky, once again, you able to master this track? Well, obviously, growing up in the sand helps, but uh, at that rate, I mean, this really wasn't all about speed. It was about endurance, and uh, got to give it up for my trainer, Eldon Baker. It's, uh, it's where it's at. You know, that was fitness today.